this. <laughs> it's Fox and Friends. This kid. Man, somebody, if it's not one of us, it's the other. It's I just going what, around. Oh, can somebody get this guy some tissues or coffee or a, a cigarette? We're so great, we're <laughs> contagious. One of us at all times. Uh, yes, one of us at all times has a going horrible on. plague. Some sort of problem. This is what happens when you have two work husbands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Problems. Um, all right, we got some big headlines to get to before we get some other big stories today. All right, here we go. Here are your headlines because we want to start with the latest on the crisis in the Gulf where the news continues... <laughs> To get worse, if you can believe it, we're now getting word that much of the oil washing onto marshes along the coast could prove impossible to remove. This is why they were supposed to get it beforehand. Jonathan Seri joins us from Venice, Louisiana. It's hard to imagine that the news is getting worse this morning, Jonathan. What's the latest? It, it is indeed, Allison, but while it's relatively easy to clean the oil off of sandy be beaches once it, once it gets into the marshes and other wetlands, virtually impossible to get out. They're going to have to try experimenting with some brand new technology to do that. The latest looking forward today is that Lisa Jackson, the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, is visiting Louisiana to monitor the response to the oil spill. This will mark her third visit to the region since the spill began just over a month ago. Take a look at this video. Our photographer went out with a local shrimper just off the coast of Grand Isle. At one point, a large school of fish appeared, flapping in the water, many of the fish bumping into his boat, oblivious to the fact that it was there, the fish gasping for oxygen. George Arneson says he's never seen anything like it during the 15 years he's worked on the Gulf. It's real emotional for me being a commercial fisherman, knowing that my livelihood, way of life all together is in great danger of being destroyed. Uh, the whole industry is in danger of being destroyed, and I feel like there's just not enough being done. At one point, Arneson dipped a large bucket into the water. When he pulled it back into his boat, it was filled with thick black sludge. Now, in addition to the toxic effects of the oil, federal, federal regulators have voiced concerns about the impact of the record amount of chemical dispersants BP has been using to break up the spill. Now, you may remember last week uh, the EPA issued a federal directive asking BP to seek less toxic alternatives. Well, BP has responded to that directive saying that the alternatives are either not available in the amounts that they need to deal with the spill or haven't been adequately tested on this type of environment that the spill occurred in. And so BP responding that core exit, the current chemical dispersant that it is, has been using, is the best option for use underwater. Look at the figures. They're astronomical. Uh, 715,000 gallons of dispersant used so far. 85,000 of those gallons used underwater. Allison, back to you. Jonathan, sorry, thank you so much. It's so depressing. I mean, it's just heartbreaking, particularly when we've seen other technology that could, on a very small scale, work. More on that later. Meanwhile,